Hi, my name is Dr. Capassi. I'm going to show you how to use a direct ophthalmoscope to do a retinal exam. So the two kinds that you'll see in the emergency room, one is the direct ophthalmoscope from Welch Allen, that's the model we have here, and the other is the panoptic ophthalmoscope from Welch Allen, which is the preferred model that I like using, which I'll also show you how to use. First, we're going to start with the di regular direct ophthalmoscope. The way to turn the instrument on is a little green knob. You depress it and rotate, and it turns the light on. As you can see, uh, the illumination is present. There are a few options on the front here to rotate to change the illumination. Okay, I'll show you what each of the options does. Small circle, medium circle, large circle, circle with a crosshair is measured to, used to measure size differences within the retina. Line, this is a slit lamp mode. If you actually use this, you can, you can use it as an anterior segment uh, machine if you have two, two of these. Red free light, this is important. It's a green light, red free. It's used to see blood on the retina. Blood will look black on a white background instead of with standard illumination, blood will look red on an orange background. You'll need to master the white light before you'll be able to master the green light, which is red free. The knob on this side is used to change the refractive power of the direct ophthalmoscope. If you keep your spectacles on, you start, can start at zero, assuming that the patient you're going to be measuring also has no refractive error. If you take your spectacles off, then you need to dial in what your prescription was. In my case, it's minus five. If you look here, there's a little number that's illuminated. If the light turns red, it's negative prescription. If the light turns green, it's positive prescription. So I would dial in minus five, and then I would start my refraction. Let's go ahead and look at how to start uh, using the panoptic ophthalmoscope. So I'm gonna set this down here, pick up the panoptic ophthalmoscope. Once again, to turn it on, depress the green and rotate. And you'll see that the light is, uh, light is present. Let's show you how to switch modes. On the, on the first one, the direct ophthalmoscope, there was a knob in the front here to turn the illumination, okay? In this one, the knob happens to be at the back here. With the illumination on, you can see it's a green light. You're gonna rotate, white light, big circle medium circle. The medium circle has a green bar here. This is the default mode of the panoptic ophthalmoscope. Small circle, white. Line mode, this is the slit lamp mode that we saw on the direct ophthalmoscope. Blue light, blue, this is the cobalt blue filter used to see fluorescein, okay? This is different than the green light, which is the red free light, once again. How, what about the zoom? On the direct ophthalmoscope, we saw that uh, the focus was adjusted by moving this by moving this knob here. Okay. On the panoptic ophthalmoscope, it's a telescopic system. You keep the focus here at zero, or you smoothly rotate down. You'll see the marker moving downwards for negative prescription, or smoothly moving upwards for positive prescription. Okay. Let's just review uh, the knobs in detail of this direct ophthalmoscope zoomed in so we can see what they are. So the knob to turn it on, right here. To switch the illumination, the knob's right here in the front. To change the refractive power of the focus, knob's on the side here. Okay? Let's review in zoomed in detail the panoptic ophthalmoscope with all the knobs. To turn it on, green, green pushed and rotated. How about the zoom? You can see here in green, 8 to 20, 8 to 20 in red, with a zero here. You can see the line here indicating where the focusing is, and you can see it's a smooth movement rather than a click wheel style zoom on the direct ophthalmoscope. And to change the illumination, here's the, here's the wheel to move, and you can see that I can rotate the, the, the wheel to get different modes on the front here, and you can see the little green bar here for the default mode. I mentioned at the start of the video that my preference is to use the panoptic ophthalmoscope. Why is that the case? For a couple of reasons. First reason being, the panoptic ophthalmoscope has a much wider field of view than a, a standard direct ophthalmoscope. You can actually see 30 degrees all the way around, giving a very good view of the posterior pole. Number two, 
the distance of the panoptic ophthalmoscope is much further than the distance of the standard ophthalmoscope, giving you flexibility of being this far away from the patient's face, reducing that uncomfortable factor of being too close. Number three, the panoptic ophthalmoscope, this model here, I don't have it, comes with a little cup that you can put on the front that completely goes over the patient's eye. This eliminates any ambient light from entering the optical system of the direct ophthalmoscope, meaning that you can use a panoptic ophthalmoscope in bright daylight without interfering with your retinal exam. Number four, the panoptic ophthalmoscope has a smooth zoom system, which is much better and more efficient than the click wheel system found in the direct ophthalmoscope. You can put your thumb on and just look in and smoothly change your focus till you can see things in focus. And for these reasons, I find the panoptic ophthalmoscope a much more robust tool to look at the retina. I'm going to show you how to do a retinoscopic examination on a patient with an ophthalmoscope. I'm going to use the panoptic ophthalmoscope as an example. I'm going to examine my patient here, okay? First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the panoptic ophthalmoscope on, okay? After that, I'm going to ask the patient to remove their spectacles so I can see. That's yes, sort now, I like to do my uh, ophthalmoscopic examinations with my spectacles on. If you prefer, you, once again, you can take it off and dial your prescription into the ophthalmoscope itself. We always start by examining the right eye, and that's what I'm going to do in this case. And for illustrative purposes, I'll show you um, how to do the examination. So you get the patient to look into the distance far away. So I'm going to get you to look at that blue light way into the distance. Okay. Approach the patient by stabilizing yourself first. So put your arm on the patient here, or hold the chair, um, or some people, to support the instrument, keep their elbow on their patient, and use two hands to support the ophthalmoscope when they're going in. Once again, the advantage of the panoptic is you can use your right eye or your left eye on the patient's either eye to examine. So I like using my right eye to do the examination. Approach the patient at 15 degrees. The first thing that will come into view is the red reflex followed by the optic nerve. The optic nerve is 15 degrees off axis. If you approach at 15 degrees, you'll see that first. Then, to see the fovea and the macula, there are two options. The easier option being, ask the patient to look at the light. Okay? They will move their gaze by 15 degrees right into the light of the ophthalmoscope and you'll be able to visualize the fovea right away. The other option would be to rotate yourself 15 degrees, looking right into the fovea. When done correctly, it's going to look something like this. Here, I can see the patient's um, red reflex now. I'm going to keep my hand on their shoulder. I'm about 15 degrees away. I'm going to follow that red reflex right in. And right about here, I can see the patient's uh, disc. Now, uh, would you mind looking directly at the light, please? You can see that his gaze shifted 15 degrees, and I can see his phobia. Or look straight ahead, sir. And if he's looking straight ahead, I can rotate myself to see his phobia. And when a dilated patient, I can also move down and up and left and right to see different parts of the retina, giving me a nice 30-degree posterior segment examination. And that's all there is to it.